guys, my name is Crystal. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope everybody is having a great start to Tuesday. It is Tuesday and the weather's turned a bit colder and cooler. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Ever feel like it's a boring day? Well, the BBC certainly did on this day in 1930 when they announced there is no news during their evening report. Right guys, so after having a lovely fish and chip meal, very nice cappuccino, very nice local fish and chip shop, it looked like a, a father and daughter were running it, that's what it looked like to me, and um, there was one customer in there, a man with a cap on his head and he kept making noises, um, and then a couple of girls came in later on just as we were leaving the fish and chip restaurant um, the, like I said it was the one of the best fish and chips I'd ever eaten it was delicious so we all had the same the three of us had the same cod and chips with a slice of lemon um, cherry coke bottle of orange I had a cappuccino and then later on I started to start coughing I get an itchy, irritated throat and um, I was kindly bought a bottle of water. I, I, it, it happens on the videos, I get a dry throat and I start coughing. I don't smoke, you know, so it's not smoking, I'm not coughing because I'm a smoker, I don't smoke. I get an itchy, irritated throat and I just, I mean it used to happen in chat and library, I used to spend five minutes, people thought I was choking to death. I, I have to carry water and chewing gum, you see, because my throat gets dry and I start coughing. It's happened in the taxi as well. Strong air fresheners bring it on. So we then, um, I had to get back to Max. Um, so I was kindly driven back um, to Rochester and uh, you have to go on the motorway, of course. A lovely Turkish delight sky going home. The sun started to go down and it started to get dark. Um, we drove through somewhere called uh, Del Boys, D L D E L B O Y S, going th through to uh, Chatham. We went through Maidstone. Maidstone. went through Maidstone and Chatham and then from Chatham to Rochester so we must have left around quarter to eight because I think I got home here about quarter to nine and um, I was driven around the back of the flats and as I was going in through the back entrance, my neighbour next door was coming through the front entrance, the blonde lady. I don't drive either, so I was driven home. I can't drive. So I was a passenger in the back seat. So I comes up, the, I let the lady next door go upstairs. I slowly go up the stairs after she's gone up the stairs and I go into my flat. My dog is sat curled up on the chair. Nothing's been touched, moved. The sofa's okay because some dogs chew the sofa up, don't they? But Max is very house trained and he's a tiny dog. He's just right for me, aren't you, Max? Yes, you are, aren't you? You good boy? Are you a good boy? He's just the right size dog for me. He's very well behaved. Very well behaved. He does get upset sometimes. But if I, I left um, Nicky in with Max, my tortoiseshell cat, so he didn't feel alone when I left him. I wasn't gone that long anyway. I must have been gone for about three, three and a half hours and I couldn't bear to leave him overnight, he's, he's, 
lovely. Listen, so I came back into the flat, so I, I put my backpack down, which I took with me, and I take everywhere. Um, and um, I took Max out for a walk about quarter past nine. And it was pitch black, and it was chilly and cold. There was a couple of people about. I walked along the Rochester Riverside, uh, walked past the co-op onto the field, and I went halfway around the field, came back. The co-op was open at 5 to 10, so someone was going in there. Um, I walked past the co-op around, and I almost bumped into the guy with the pub dogs. There was a flashing green and red collars flashing at me. Max barked and alerted me someone was there and I almost bumped into him. But I was, I was so tired, I was exhausted and I just wanted to go home. I also wanted to go to the toilet. So I, I got home and went back in the front of the flat, no, the back of the flats again. The lift hadn't been mended, uh, so the lift in my apartment is still broken. Uh, Jackson's lifts I'd seen in the morning, they, they turned round that road up there opposite my flats and drove off. So the lift is still out of order. Um, I had walked across a pebbled beach. My feet were sore last night. And it's my right leg that hurts worse than my left leg. But I managed to walk up the stairs. But I saw Jackson's lifts, a uh, red and white van, do a turn and drive off. So they were about yesterday, but they didn't. the lift is still broken. Um, there are families in here with, uh, like, children with disabilities so we've all got to walk up and down the stairs again um, I'm not complaining um, I'm just you know I've reported it to Hyde Housing I reported it when it happened uh, the day afterwards a Sunday morning I I put an email into Hyde Housing informing them that their lift in Biggs apartments is broken um, so it's not Hyde Housing, they know, it's Jackson's Lifts that service the lift and the lift is their responsibility and they were around this morning but they didn't come into the flat. So, you know, if someone wants me to lose weight, so, I'm gonna, so until the lift's mended we're all going to be walking up and down the stairs. Um came back into my flat, I was exhausted, I was tired, but I wanted the fish and chips to digest. Um, so I um, sat down and I played a game on my iPhone and I had the telly on and I went to bed. It must have been getting on for 12 midnight. Um, there was various characters about yesterday in Folkestone and on Rochester Railway Station because when I come back from walking I noticed it. Odd characters on Rochester Railway Station like a six foot dark skinned woman with afro hairstyle. She must have been six foot nearly. A woman that had a really large behind in a pair of jeans with a phone sticking out of her bottom, her back pocket, uh, with half cut jeans down half the sides of her legs. So a piss take of my mum because I don't roll my jeans up and I'm not extremely large. Um, there was characters walking up and down outside the fish shop. They looked drunk and disorderly. One was taking a piss because I'd taken photographs of Folkestone and there was a, a drunk guy in a beanie hat taking photographs like this with a funny face outside the cafe. Um, I wouldn't have liked to have walked around Folkestone by myself, put it that way. There was drug addicts and drunks about. 
especially in the dark, so I wouldn't have liked to have been there by myself. Um, went to bed and um, my mum's rung me two times so far because I said that I was going to go up and see her today but at the moment I'm feeling exhausted and tired and I want to rest. I've walked across a pebbled beach, uh, my, my feet are sore and my mum tends to shout and rant about my father and I'm just not in the mood for it today to be honest. I've also had a fish and chip meal yesterday so I'm full up. I'm not, my stomach's not empty. Um, I had a message from Maritime Health telling me that the link to what they've shown me expires and my phone doesn't support their link so I can't click on the link because it says your browser doesn't support this application and that's what my father Derek used to get on his phone. That's what my father Derek used to get. His doctors used to send him links and he couldn't open them. This is before he died and now my doctors is doing the same thing to me. On the way home we, we passed Bluebell's crematorium where my father Derek Trower was cremated on the 25th of August 2021. So my father wasn't buried, he was burnt, he was cremated. Right, and his ashes were scattered around Bluebell Crematorium's gardens. Right? So whoever's doing this thinks it's funny doing the same things to me as they did to my father Derek before he passed away. My dad had heart failure. He had COPD. Bad lungs and bad heart. He died of natural causes albeit suddenly, out of nowhere, because, I, I mean, it's amazing, the human body. Apparently, my dad was upright and talking to my mother. He goes to the toilet, he gets off the toilet, and he collapses on the floor in my mum and dad's bedroom and drops down dead. But before he died, he was speaking. Quite fluently, apparently, and being the way he was, moaning at my mother. So he was moaning about, moaning to my mother about not to ring the doctor before he dropped dead. And he died with one eye open apparently, because he had a bad eye. As a child he had a bad eye, so he, he fell on the floor with one eye open. This is what I was told by my mother Jennifer. Because he was my dad and I was living at my flat when my dad died at Durrell Gardens on the floor in his bedroom. Okay? It does upset me when I'm reminded of my father for more, more than one reason. And yes, I was driven past uh, Bluebell Crematorium where my dad was burnt last night before I went to bed. Um... My mum's rung twice. I don't live at Durrell Gardens. My mum, Jennifer, lives on her own. But she's got next door neighbours that keep an eye on her. And um, I, don't, I don't want to get treated like my father. I don't want to sit in solitary confinement. And my mum keeps opening the door. Oh, I'm carrying on as usual. It's like a bad sitcom. Like her and Derek were the comedy couple, you know. I'm carrying on as usual and Dad would get up. What did you say, Jennifer? Right, everybody needs to move on. My dad, Derek, died in 2021. You can't... It's like, do, do you all remember uh, when they 
it's like dynasty and a character drops dead and they bring it back to life and it's, it's not the same is it or, or they replace a character it's not the same can I just keep saying that Derek is dead and I'm Derek's daughter yes I look like my father Derek I would do but my father Derek was a six foot two man and um, how could I possibly be Derek I'm, 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 a, I'm a midget compared to my dad my father Derek was a hulk of a man he was massive big everybody was afraid of him I'm tiny I mean, come on. And as for scaring me, like, you know, if you say anything, you're going to end up like your father, like your sister. What will be, will be. You know? I've lived on my own since I left my ex-husband in 2008 on and off I lived with my parents down in Chatham until 2012 when one of my sons came down to live with me from Gloucestershire right um so sorry it's disturbance outside women talking underneath my balcony um so from 2015 16 early 16 i've lived completely by myself with no company whatsoever just going up and down to see my mum and dad when my dad was alive now i got to double gardens to see my mum who's increasingly frail she's all hunched over and I've said that she, she needs to be looked after in sheltered accommodation. She wants to carry on. That's her prerogative. She wants to live in her own home and carry on for as long as she, as she can. I can't stop that. As many, many old people want to live by themselves. I can't stop that. I can't interfere. Um... All I can say is that I'm not Derek, whether my mum's got d dementia, she's confused, or she's doing it on purpose. Opening the doors when I'm sat there. Oh, I'm carrying on as usual. Um, that's what she did to my dad. Um, my dad used to sit, sit by the French windows, just like that. And then she would go and try and make my dad jealous by talking to male neighbours, talking to bin men. And my, my, my dad used to get upset because my mum was talking to other people. I've said to my mum, you can talk to as many people as you want. I'm your daughter. You can talk to anyone. You can go down the whole of Doral Gardens and speak, speak to everybody. Because I'm your daughter. And, you know, dad's dead. And she says, oh, my life is ruined. My life is ruined. And I said, you know... It doesn't matter how old you are, you know, you can still carry on and, and make the most of your life. But she's got bitter and sometimes a bit twisted. And thinks everybody should suffer. And it's not everybody's fault that Derek was a bastard. And horrible. It was not other people's fault that he was like that, was it? You've just got to accept that he's gone and move on. But she can't. She can't. And taking it out on me is not going to bring Derek back and it's not going to help her situation. She was coping very well. She was getting on with her life and her workers were coming in. But I, I, a few days ago I came out of there traumatised. I was traumatised. traumatised and it's no good trying to people to set me up either like inciting and provoking people making them cross it, it's no it's no good doing that because that's not going to work 
I just take, I just go outside and I take a, a breath of fresh air, count to ten, and go back in. And then if I get shouted out again, I do the same thing. But these these people are provoking. They are saying things, and then it makes you extremely angry, right? And like you know, I've got crooked teeth, so my mum just out of nowhere uh, say. Um, it doesn't matter about your teeth, Janestra. Your teeth are okay. And it had come out of nowhere. I mean, what did you say that for? Where did that come from? Um, I, can, I, can, I can remember I was at Lansdowne Court and someone said to me, I was sat down at Lansdowne Court and I was like happy as a sandboy and shit. I'd been shopping and then someone said to me, you can't help it, you look like a pig. You can't help it, you look like a pig. And you get up and you get cross, don't you? Now I laugh. And you turn around and say, I, I, you can't help it that I look like a pig. Well, you can't help it, you look like a, a SpongeBob SquarePants.